So today I want to talk to you about AI, and I'm sure over the day you've actually heard lots about AI, and you know, there's so much exciting going on here. What I want to talk about is some of the underlying trends that are shaping AI and bring in a little bit of the economics and say that there are some really important trends that could either be very exciting or could be worrying for us, and that we should think about how to interpret them. So, you know, I think the big thing that, of course, people are talking about is generative AI, and we know already that these hints that there's an incredible amount of resources being allocated to these models. And so for these large language models, for the, you know, the successor of ChatGPT4, we know that people are spending on the order of $100 million to build these models. So these are enormous models that people are building. And I'm going to come back to those large language models. But to understand this phenomenon and this usage of resources better, I want to step back and think about an area of AI that is actually a little older. right? We have a little bit more data on, and we can analyze, and that's computer vision. So this is the ImageNet database. People may be familiar with it. It's probably the most famous of the image recognition ones. And the task is very simple. We're going to show the computer a picture, and we're going to say, can you tell us what it is? And if the computer says it's a dog and it is a dog, it's got it right. And if it says it's a dog and it says it's a, cat, it's a car, then it got it wrong. OK, great. So this is, then, a really important task. And it's a nice task because we have more than 10 years of data on it. So how has it been progressing over time? It's been progressing enormously quickly. So each of these dots represents, in the competition that's done each year, the best model that, is, that has been presented. And what you can see on the y-axis here is the amount of computation that's, uh, excuse me, the uh, error that has been used and uh, gotten by the system. And you can see this nice drop here. And notice that we're on an exponential scale, so that we see this. But we see this very, very smooth transition. And I think if you look at this, you can say, boy, I really understand why it feels like AI is improving so fast. Right? It's just going down. You can make these nice projections, and you'd say, well, when are we going to get to 5% error or 3% error? I said, great. And I want to know what's going on under the hood. Right? Because people are working on these AI models. They're doing all kinds of different things. And the question is, like, what are they, what's actually being done to make these models better? And a really important thing that's being done is we're throwing more and more computing power at these models. We're grading bigger and bigger uh, mo models that we do it on, and we're often using more and more data to either train or to pre-train in order to get these models. OK, so how important is this phenomenon? So I want to show you this graph, and there's a whole bunch going on here, so let me break apart the different pieces of it here. OK, so each of those dots that was on that previous one is now on this graph in the red. OK, so those are, again, the best models of each year. But notice I've changed the x-axis. So instead of being progress over time, we're now looking at progress based on the amount of computing power that's being used on these models. And notice how big these jumps are between these ticks. That's a hundredfold increase in the amount of computing being used. OK, now, you know, if we take ourselves into sort of like the normal world and out of computing. If I tell you, like, you're going to need 100, more car, 100 times more cars for this, right, or 100 times more groceries, you say, boy, that gets expensive really quickly, right? And yet, we are absolutely taking these big jumps with these models. OK, so that's, the, that's what we're looking at. And again, notice on the, um, on the y-axis, we have this error rate. So we see, again, this very predictable drop going on, but it's because we're leveraging an enormous amount of compute. OK, now I want you to look at the top x-axis here, which is the amount of carbon dioxide produced. So this is an estimate based on sort of a 2022 number of, on average, if you run these models, how much carbon dioxide are you producing? And what you notice here is these models are, are using an enormous amount of resources in terms of compute, and that is leading them to produce a lot of carbon dioxide as well here. And you can see that we've annotated this by various measures of how much, an Amer how much carbon dioxide an American produces in a year, in their whole lifetime, how much does Col uh, Boulder, Colorado produce, and how much does New York City produce in a month. OK, so these are really, really big numbers. Now, it's important to say that those projections right, assume that we're not going to do something to figure this out. And of course, we are trying to do lots of stuff. In fact, if you've been here today, I'm sure you've heard lots of examples of people trying to do stuff. But it is important to say that you know, 
historically, in this past 10 years, we have both done a lot of that stuff and we have also massively increased the footprint of these models. Right? We have more than taken back the benefits of the efficiency improvements in order to expand these models. So this really is a huge effect, and we need to be thinking about it because as these models get bigger, I mean, this graph is already showing you that the carbon dioxide might be an issue. There's a whole second thing, which is just that these models get more and more expensive. And that might take us into a world where we actually would only have a few models that could be used, right? And if you're an economist, you should worry about that, right? You'd say that sounds like something that would lead to a natural monopoly or lead to a lot of power in a particular few hands. And we might not want that as a society. OK, so I promised I would come back to the large language models. And I want to do that, and I want to actually expand it out to uh, lots and lots of machine learning models. So this is another graph produced, in this case, by a student in my lab, where what they've looked at is big machine learning systems over time. And what you can see is this one actually goes back to the 1950s. And you can see that in that first period, um, the amount of compute that's being used, which is on the, the y-axis here. And again, notice we have these very large jumps in the amount of compute uh, that we have here. The amount of compute is growing, and the doubling rate, as you can see on the left-hand side, is 21 months. And that should like, set off your spidey sense, right? Because it's like, that sounds an awful lot like Moore's Law, right? And that's really what's going on here, right? Is people are spending about the same amount of money to build a new system. Right? And that new system is more powerful, so they get more out of it. And then they update their computers again about the same cost, and they can do more and more. So that's the story of most of this graph. And then we hit 2009, 2010, and all of a sudden we get this takeoff, because people realize they can use GPUs on these system, for these systems, and they start scaling it up because they're getting these incredible results. So part of what they're doing is getting that more efficiency from like better hardware, and part of what they're doing is just throwing a huge amount more money into building these models, and therefore a lot of compute and a lot more carbon dioxide being produced. OK, and so you can see that as we get to the right hand side of this chart, we get doubling rates that are much, much more rapid. So we get a six month doubling rate on the blue dots, and then those red dots are these very, very large language models and other very large models. And you can see that even though that's not quite as rapid, it's still quite rapid, right? A doubling every 10 months is an enormous increase in the number of resources being used. OK, so in my last few seconds here, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the areas that my lab studies in terms of trying to understand actually what we can do to alleviate this. So I already told you one, right? Moore's Law was a great way to do this because it made our chips much better and, and meant that they were more energy efficient and a lot of these things that we would worry about actually are not problems. Of course, the problem is that Moore's Law is coming to an end, right? And so we're, not, we're already not getting the improvements we were getting before and that we expect that to slow down even more. We can get hardware accelerators, right? So this is like NVIDIA producing the newest version of a GPU or some of the work that's being done here. That has been enormously impactful in this area. So even in the early days, that provided something like a 40x improvement. But it is also slowing. And so we're not sure that that's going to provide the long-term gains that we would hope um, in order to be able to fuel the AI for, say, the next decade. You can also think about uh, algorithmic improvement. So you know, we're always thinking about how can we improve the way we're doing these things and become more efficient. And that turns out to be actually about as important as hardware in terms of the improvements we've been getting. So that's really, really important. Um, and the question is, again, how long we can continue that. And we're doing some work on that. And then lastly, I just want to sort of throw out this idea of the beyond CMOS or quantum optical computing. Right? Again, some of these areas we see big improvements. But it's worth saying that many of these areas we see sort of like one-time improvement or a series of improvements, but perhaps not the improvements that would last for decades and decades. And so there's a real challenge that's going to come. And this is what our, my lab is working on, trying to understand where are we going to get this performance if we want to keep moving up this AI curve and getting more and more performance the way we would want to. Thank you.